Hey guys, what's up? Uh, we are here with another video today. This one, I'm putting it with the beginner series, but it's going to be able to, I think this should be applicable for a lot of people. Uh, this is a lot of stuff that I recently, you know, I learned, I don't know, probably in the past like six months or so. So I was pretty far into the game when I learned a lot of this. I mean, you knew the basics, but wanted to put out a, uh, a positioning guide. So that's what this video is going to be. It's not going to be all inclusive. I'm not going to cover every team. And I think that a lot of people are going to have differing opinions here when I go through this stuff. And so it'll be interesting. I'd love to uh, just discuss it with you guys. So I hope that this video will open up a conversation. Maybe you know something I don't. Maybe I know something you don't. And we can all just grow and learn from it. So this is going with the beginner series, but this is just an overarching video about positioning. My shirt is kind of see-through, but I didn't want to go change. So it's tough. All right. So in talking about positioning, there's lots of different teams, right? So I'm going to go over some common teams. I'm going to go over like layouts, why it should be this way. What else you could do instead if you wanted to. That sort of thing. I think this should help people. Again, there's likely to be differing opinions because we all do things differently, but there will be some general tips that are just kind of standard. So we can go ahead and get into this real quick. So immediately, the first team that I think of that when I think of like interesting positioning is shield team, all right? So with the shield team, this is my favorite setup. This is what my like, I've got this one pre-saved. This is the one that I always use. So this is, uh, there's a reason for this one, all right? So a lot of people don't like to use shield trooper. This setup is kind of built around him and I, I like him. I have him at seven red star, but I also just like him. I think he's better than operative but that's a different opinion for a different time people disagree with that all the time that's just me so with this the way it works right so nick fury's in the middle you might be saying why is he in the middle because when you summon operative operative can take taunts or take the when she takes buffs away from someone she then gives them to nick fury well if she gives him a taunt then he's in the middle right well who's adjacent to him shield trooper so then he'll be doing counter attacks based on that obviously shield security is there because you know, he's the taunter and that's going to allow shield trooper to continue to just do his counter attacks. Then you have shield assault all the way, the furthest away because shield assault is very squishy and that keeps her away from all the damage from the taunts and stuff or the adjacent damage from the taunts, which can wipe her out. Obviously it's not foolproof. Uh, this is the way that I like to have this team set up. And essentially you want to do that to keep the chains away as well. Uh, so like you might have a chain and it might not go through the whole team and so then that would keep the squishiest character alive So you got the tank on one side squishiest character on the other side and then because of shield trooper He has the counter attacks you want him to be you know as close to people who are getting hit as often as possible Now some people might do this a little differently if you used operative you'd probably have uh, Security on one side then you would probably have Nick Fury on the other side then you would probably put medic next to shield security because medic has a lot of health and then I don't know if it really matters as far as I guess operative you would put maybe in the middle because operative I feel like operative typically stealths herself. I don't know if that's always the case, but I always try and wipe out operative real quick when I face her. So she always ends up stealthing herself. I'm not sure. I mean, obviously it's whoever has the lowest health, but I tend to think that she stealths herself the most, but you could put whoever the weakest is in the middle, whoever you think is going to have the lowest health. Then that way she'll constantly be stealthing somebody in the middle that will stop chains. It's kind of like hard, right? Because you could potentially put the weakest person next to shield security. So then that way, uh, operative can stealth them and then there will be no chains going past shield security but that's kind of a risk because whoever is the lowest health but that is a strategy and that's going to lead us into the next team so it doesn't have to be this team specifically but any team with captain america and black widow they always need to be set up just like this it doesn't matter your left side right side doesn't it doesn't matter whichever side because then that way because captain america taunts so much any chain attacks are going to get stopped because black widow is going to be stealthed now, the way that I did this, I then put Iron Man in the middle because he is the next beefiest because I have him at six red star and then War Machine, Captain Marvel. I don't think it really matters at that point so much. I did that that way. I wanted to keep Captain Marvel alive the longest, even though she is one of the strongest. I kept her away from everything. That's just kind of, there's, there's basic strategies to this, right? So the basic strategies are tanks on a far side. Characters you want to keep alive on the other farthest side. If you have stealth next to the taunting tank, and then if you don't have stealth 
you want to have high health characters next to the tank because then they can take in the adjacent attacks and it's not a big deal. It really just, it depends. It really just depends on each team, but those are basically like core principles you want to like stick to and think about and consider now each team has individual nuances and you can see that for example with a Cree team we're going to look at a Cree team here and that team it's nuanced because it depends on which characters you use so you can look at it right here right so looking at this team you could say all right well you know wherever whatever whatever these ones don't really matter again they matter basic strategies apply you have the tank on the far edge and then you have someone with high health right next to him and then the nuance is is that Cree Reaper is your damage dealer right well Cree Noble calls in assists so if you use Cree Noble right here she only calls assists to adjacent allies well nobody else on this team really deals very much damage at all so you could put Cree Noble right here so she will always call in Cree Reaper who will then also have offense up who can immediately afterwards use her special for a ton of damage and so it works out really well because you use this and it just intentionally calls her, intentionally calls her. And so that's obviously intentional setup and design. Now, maybe you wanted to do it a little differently. Maybe you were facing a, a battle or trying to use them for something that had a lot of buffs. You could put Ronan right there and call him into assist. And then he will have an extra just round of removing debuffs, which is interesting, right? So it just depends on the situation and how you want to do that i'm making a positioning guide and my brawlers team is positioned incorrectly don't pay attention to that uh miss marvel should be on the edge there i just haven't changed it because i don't really use this team at high tiers of blitz so it doesn't really matter they're going to win no matter what but if your brawler team is a good team you need to make sure that you set it up properly you should always set it up properly. now you might be saying all right so i see your sinister six team and the regular basic, I guess, uh, applications, they're not, they don't apply for this team. This team's a little different. You might be saying, well, why is the tank in the middle? Well, the reason the tank is in the middle, and I think it's really subjective, to be honest. I think it's really subjective, but Rhino clears debuffs with his, uh, his taunt ability, which he clears them from adjacent allies. I don't know the optimal way for this team. I really don't. And so that's why it's important to just know the basics and you can figure it out for yourself. But the reason Rhino's in the middle is so that he can clear these debuffs. Well, I mean, if you put him on the edge, he can only clear from one person. And that might be a huge deal that you need to clear something, an ability block or a blind. Or, well, I mean, he clears blinds automatically. But like an ability block or, you know, something like that, that might be pivotal. That might be pivotal to be cleared. So it's kind of hard to say. I use him in the middle. I've heard a lot of people talk about using him in the middle. They like him in the middle. And so that's kind of my thoughts. I don't know. I'm still working that one out. The same with the aim team. I'm just, I'm not sure yet where is best for them to be positioned. I'm really not. Uh, I don't have Graviton unlocked yet. So it's kind of like, okay, like, I don't, I don't know quite yet. But I mean, obviously, again, basic principles apply, which is the tank on the far edge, which you can see all the way over there. No, not right there. That scientist pretty much. But otherwise, it's kind of interesting because the different characters apply different things, right? So a monstrosity gives offense up. So you don't want to put him on an edge because you only get offense up to himself on one other character. You definitely want offense up on two characters or three characters if possible. If you're using aim infector, he gives uh, he gives counter to people. So maybe you put like uh, monstrosity right here, and then on the opposite side you put infector. I don't know. It's hard to say. It's kind of one of those things. I mean, it might be interesting to keep up. Maybe it would be interesting to have counterattack up on your tank. Uh, this team's really interesting. I haven't got to play with them as much as I want to just yet. I just don't have the resources to invest in them. So if anybody has any nice tips on the aim teams, I would be interested to hear about them because I just don't really know a lot about them just yet, but I do really like them. So really, I mean, it just depends, right? So each team is so different. Each team is so different. And so... You know, you might say, okay, well, with vision, all right, so we've got vision here. Let's put vision next to the tank, right? Because he has a really high rate of dodge. So you put him right there so he can dodge the any adjacent attacks that go through. You wouldn't want to put rocket there. You put rocket there. 
then he ends up taking tons and tons of damage and he might die. But you do want to put Raga next to Star-Lord because then Star-Lord feeds him energy. Some people swap this. They put Minerva there. I don't think that's necessary for Blitz or Raid Battles. Or maybe for Raid Battles it's a bit better, but for Blitz it's not really a big deal. Now, and then you have someone like, okay, so you have Thanos now. Okay, so if you put Rocket in between Star-Lord and Thanos, Rocket can use his ultimate ability almost every single turn, which is nutty in Raids, which is what I would use this team for. And that's something you want to think about. I mean, I put him next to Minerva as well, so any excess energy that uh, Rocket doesn't take or he doesn't take, that can go to Minerva to get the extra heals going. She has a ton of health, so it's not too bad to sit her beside Groot or I guess really in the middle of both tanks. It's not that big of a deal. But Rocket, like I said, it kind of goes against the standard principles that I said. Rocket is weak. He's got low health, but you set him next to the tank, but the tank gives energy. That's why you do it. In normal circumstances, you would not want to do that because he's weak he can get he can get taken off knocked off by adjacent hits so it really just depends team from team and you know again this team is interesting as well because i've got daredevil next to luke cage because when luke cage is taunting daredevil's adjacent well whenever daredevil gets hit punisher counterattacks that person so i put them right there that way it can those counterattacks can go out some people do it differently some people put iron fist there as well in the middle so that that way when they're trying to kill iron fist so he doesn't keep healing well if they hit adjacent with uh daredevil and then punisher will keep going you know so on and so forth it's interesting the way like just the theory crafting you can come up with this i'm not sure again if there's an optimal one i'm sure that people say oh this is my optimal one. Oh, this is my optimal one i don't know i like this one this one works good for me it just really depends like i said with shield like there's different options what you could do you can even keep this same lineup and you can swap nick fury over here and you would put shield salt right here and you would put medic right here and then that way you keep you won't because nick fury is the best character on this team you would put nick fury all the way over there and that would keep him the safest because the tall take it everything else so it just depends you know, all of this just really depends. So it's like on this team, you could say, okay, well, we could put Pyro next to Juggernaut because Pyro gains turn meter every time he gets hit. So you could do, again, adjacent attack, things like that. But you don't really know, right? Like you don't know he could die. He's really squishy and he's also my weakest one. So I try to keep him away from there. Magneto is pretty strong because of my red stars that I have on him. So I leave him there next to Juggernaut. It just really... It depends case to case, it depends red stars, but again, the basic principles, which are tanks on the far end, people you wanna protect on the other far end, anything that involves counterattacks, you wanna put next to the tank, and that's, you know, then you want high health, you know, kinda of like, almost like so, for, like, like tiered, like, okay, so like high health, like, and then lowest health on the opposite side or person that you wanna keep alive. It really does just depend it really does just depend. And so if we had an X-Men team here, which I don't have, but you would want to have, you want Phoenix to be next to Colossus because that way, because you want Phoenix to die. And so by the time you get Dark Phoenix, if you get Dark Phoenix, you're probably going to win. And um, it won't really matter if she's next to the tank or not. It won't make that big of a difference by that point in the battle. And again, Ultron, he's the furthest away because I want him to stay alive the longest. You know what I mean? I don't want him to be having any issues or being hit by anybody if I can help it. So again, pretending that in this situation that Colossus is in there instead of Mordo, that's the way you would want to do that. Now, don't ask why I have that team. People give me crap for that team all the time. It's just a team that I just blow up anything with. It blows up everything and everything. So overall, guys, I really hope that uh, this helps. It's simple, right? So you're just kind of looking at this, you're just like, oh, like that wasn't really that much information. I think it's important basic information. A lot of people don't know this stuff. I didn't know this stuff for a long time, but when I started positioning my teams better, it completely changed the game for me, like completely. You can win some battles because your positioning is better. Let me say that to you again. I don't know if you're hearing me. You can win battles you normally could not have won because your positioning is better with the exact same team that you lost with before this helps in raids helps in blitz battles this can definitely help in arena so i think it's important to share and i just wanted you guys to know so i hope like i said i hope this helps uh if it did leave a like on the video uh share it with a friend uh leave a comment if you have any questions or if you know whatever um if you disagree with me i'm not going to argue with you in the comments so if you disagree with me i'd love to read it but i'm not going to argue with you so just know that and uh that said make sure to subscribe to the channel so like i said next goal i said this like last week next goal is 5,000. so we're getting pretty close we've gained a lot in the past few weeks so 
looking forward to that, guys. We're uh, we're rocking and rolling. So appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for supporting the channel and supporting me. You guys are the best. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next video or see you on a Twitch stream. See ya.